uh, lead me higher, lead me. This is a prayer to the Lord. This is in the first person. Lead me higher. Give me fellowship with thee. This is, this is a conversation, a conversation with the Lord. And uh, the, the other hymn that we sang, 812 in English, is I come to thee, dear Lord. My heart does thirst for thee. These kinds of hymns are very good to, you might say, um, fuel the fire of our fellowship with the Lord. When you have a, when you have a fire with coals, you know, with, right? And, and you add a, a piece of wood, you add another piece of wood, the, the fire, yeah, keeps going. Um, get stronger again. These kinds of hymns can help us very much. When you take the hymn as yours. Yeah. You know, the hymns are a legacy in the body of Christ. These hymns, these hymns, uh, this, this, the first hymn that we sang was written by Brother Lee. Yeah. The second hymn, actually, I'm not sure. I forget now. I wonder whether this might be one of the anonymous ones. Let me see. I have it here. This is 378. Yeah. Yes. The, the, the lyrics are anonymous. We don't know who wrote it. Was it a brother or a sister? But this one is a saint. Uh, let's see. Uh, the lyrics were put in in the 1800s. It was made into a hymn. You know, very often the, the hymns the, from the olden time were first poems. They were just poetic writing that some people, they just have the gift. I don't, I don't speak like this. Do you speak like this? Lead me higher up the mountain. Give me fellowship with thee. In thy light I see the fountain. I, yeah. Where the air is pure and clean. I, I don't talk in, in this poetic terms. But these saints, they, they were given this gift, you know, to write a song. I'm not a good songwriter. I think I've written maybe five or six my whole life. I wrote five or six hymns. And, and n none of them, you don't know any of them because they're not that good. Yeah, but, but some they wrote in a poetic way and then they were not the one to put the music. Someone else put the music. He, even, even Brother Lee, at times, he would, he would get the help. He would, take, he would actually take a hymn, the music from a hymn, already established and then put his poem to that music. He didn't write the music. And in many cases, it's like this. Actually, this, is, this music is from Brother Philip Bliss. Actually, this brother, Philip Bliss, he, he, he is a gift to the body because he composed the music to a number of hymns in our hymn book. You sing them. You don't know him. But you sing these hymns. That's part of his ministry in the body. And then whoever wrote this, very interesting. I thought this was an anonymous one. We don't even know. So we can't give anyone credit. Amen. It was a saint that had this prayer. That had this prayer once upon a time. Lead me. Lead me. Lead me higher. I have fellowship with you, Lord. But I'm not satisfied. Lead me higher. Up the mountain, lead me to the place where you alone are seen. You know, that's, that's from a story, that, that reminds us of a story in the Bible, right? Actually, actually, you could take two places. Moses, in the Old Testament, he, the Lord told him in, in Exodus, come up to me and come alone. 
Very interesting. You know, Moses actually went up a couple of times. Remember, he went the one time when he came down. Oh, bef- he, the Lord gave him the tablets. But before, the, before he came down the mountain, they already broke all the Ten Commandments, at least most of them. And then he went back up. In Exodus, I think it's 34, the Lord, the Lord told Moses, come up to me and come alone. And I don't want the, I don't want the uh, cattle grazing, you, you know what I mean, when they're eating, grazing at the bottom of the mountain. Why not? Why not? Why, why, why did he say this? I don't, want, I don't want the cattle grazing there. You know, the, <laughs> the children of Israel, they, they had flocks, right? They were not, at that time, they were not farmers. They were farmers in the good land. But at that time, they were shepherds. They were shepherds. Even, even when they got to Egypt, to be a shepherd is a very low thing to the Egyptians. And, and it says there, these men are shepherds. And, and anyway, they were shepherds and they were raising the cattle, firstly, for the worship, not for the eating. For the worship but they were shepherds which means all day long they hear ba moo <laughs> right all day long they're shepherd that, that's common if you if, if we would hear right now moo we would all be what's that oh we'd be like surprised because there's no cows here if we hear ba oh there's a oh there was a there was one here Right? No ba. Right? You killed it and roasted it. <laughs> but but for the sh- for for the Lord to say no no c- cattle grazing. That means I want you separated from your daily living. I want you separated from your daily routine. That, from your work. Isn't it that sometimes we, we're praying, oh, Lord Jesus, but we're thinking about work. Or we're thinking about our bills and that we don't have enough money to pay the bill, so we need to work more. And how can I earn more money? And we're having morning revival. Actually, it's money revival. <laughs> we're praying and thinking, oh, how can I get more money? Doesn't the money come? The thoughts come? You don't even realize and when they come, you don't realize when you got carried away. Sometimes it takes five minutes, and then you realize, oh, oh, Lord Jesus, oh, amen. And again, sorry, Lord, sorry. Then you come back, then you realize, oh, time's up. Oh, no, no. what kind of fellowship is that? So the Lord said, Moses, come up alone. No, I don't even want to hear the, the cows there and then the other place is in the gospels in the lord jesus on the mount of transfiguration you, you know that story where the, the disciples go up with what was it uh, uh peter james and john and then the lord is there and he oh what was that we can't even imagine what that was and his his glory came out oh and they, they got excited Peter, Peter, hey, Peter, Peter, you, you were appropriately named. Yeah, you chose this name, huh? Yes. Yeah, uh, whether you knew or didn't know, amen. Didn't know. Didn't know, but very appropriate. Yeah, Peter, Peter, uh, and, and he, you know, sometimes when you're too excited, you don't know what to say, you say something, it's better shut up. The, sa- the, safest, the safest thing is to be quiet yeah but but peter said oh lord it's wonderful for us to be here uh, uh, because why not the not he wasn't excited about the glory what did he get excited about he got excited about moses and elijah and they're there talking oh moses and elijah can you believe it oh and 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 and, and then he said something that offended the father he said let's build three tabernacles 
One for you, of course, one for you. <laughs> but, but, but also one for Moses and Elijah. Three, and the father was offended. Why? Because you can't put Moses and Elijah on the same level. You know, the Jews, they just respected Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets. It's like this. Not like this. And then, and then the cloud came over and they got scared. And then, and then when they looked up, they saw what? Jesus himself alone. It says that. Jesus himself alone. So, so this hymn actually points to that story. Where, where we can only see Jesus. We can only see Jesus. This is a good prayer. It, it, I, I, wanted, I, I, I wanted to take extra time to sing two hymns because I just want to introduce this thought to you that you can use the hymns for fellowship. Actually, my experience is very often I will wake up with some tune in my heart. Does this happen sometimes to you? Some, some music in my heart. Oh, sometimes, sometimes it's other music. You understand? <laughs> because, I, because I was listening to something else and it, oh, you know, music. M music is very particular. Music gets into your soul. Yeah. And, and so from the beginning, music has been used for the worship of God. Music is intended for worship. Satan stole it and dirties it with the mud and then makes it popular. And then music gets in. Other music. But let's not talk about that. I wake up with a song, a hymn. Some, sometimes, sometimes it's the hymn last night. You know, you just can't help it. You remember, or you were singing, or, or something of the conference, or something. But sometimes, I have not thought of this hymn for months. And I wake up, and I have that. And where did that come from? That's, I feel, that's the Lord calling me to fellowship. Calling me. And so that's why it's good to know the hymns. Know the hymns. I know a brother in, in uh, uh, Australia. He took, he took three years to just go very strictly one hymn per day. To learn it. One hymn per day. He did this. He's an elderly brother now. He, and he's confessed to me. He's testified to me how much that has helped him in his fellowship with the Lord. Because the Lord speaks to us through the hymns. But the hymns is the legacy of the body. The legacy of body. I, 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 this hymn came to me this week. Um, it's actually in the English 554. It goes like this. It says, uh, uh, I come to his presence afresh, ere the night has passed into morning. And his face I see. As it shines on me, the Lord within is dawning. I don't talk like this. But when I read that, I relate. I, 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 I like, oh, yeah, yes. That's what I want. That's what I want. So I take it as mine. It's mine. It's my prayer. And then it says, and he speaks to me and reveals to me all his riches for me today and what is it in sweet light I partake of him my hunger has passed away so when before when I when I got to my place in my home I have my place do you have your place we all need our place of fellowship you, by the way in those books that I told you this, this morning I think it, lessons for new believers this one brother Lee talks uh, in a way that I, I haven't found anywhere else in the ministry. He talks specifically about the place of prayer. 
He talks about set time, set place. A set time and a set place. Many saints pay attention to the set time. But he says there, you also need to pay attention to the place. Because we need to be in a place that is free of distractions. And many of us, over time, we found that place. But we bring distraction with us to that place. Once upon a time, there was no such thing. So free of distraction. Why would you bring the sheep and the cows with you? Leave them outside. Or turn it off, silent. Oh, it's silent, but notification, little light. You, you can't resist the temptation. Oh, oh, Lord, oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, I got to see who it is. So, so turn it off. Le just leave it. It'll be there. The cow, the sheep will be there waiting for you at the bottom of the mountain. So, the set place is important. I'm going to give you an illustration. And I am coming. Someone asked a question this morning. Was this you? You. You asked me. I'm coming to your, to your question. I'm coming to your question about set place. I'm, I, this is included in that. Um, set, a set place, free of distraction. But in our fellowship, the, well, the Lord sometimes, how should I say? 1 Corinthians 1.9 says, God is faithful who calls you into the fellowship. The person who wrote this hymn touched that. Sometimes we... Uh, when we hear something like this, fellowship like this, then the next day we try to apply. You try really hard to apply. I know. You, you, you just try to apply. Sometimes you hit it the first day and you think, ah, now I got it. I learned. And then the next day, the Lord is gone. So be, be, uh, wait for that. That's how it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But my point is, don't try so hard. Because the Lord is the one who leads us into fellowship. He's calling us into this fellowship. He wants us to have this fellowship with him more than we do. And so, in that hymn that I just told you, I4, that came to me in the morning. So, I don't wait. I don't wait until I go sit down in my place of prayer. I start singing right there. I come, Lord, before, before I take the sheet off, I'm, I already start to sing. Lord, I come to your presence afresh. And I'm saying, good night. How does it go? I come to his presence afresh. Ere the night has passed into morning. Don't sing with me. Stop, stop, stop. Because, because when we sing together, and I get touched with something? Yeah. I have, to, I have to wait until you finish singing so I could pray my prayer. You understand? Yeah. Uh, uh, any, any, maybe the song. And reveals to me. Whatever. Anyway. And then, and then I get touched. Oh, Lord. I'm going to pray. But you're still singing. We're all singing. And then we finish. Then we pray, right? Okay, when I'm by myself, I, I, I come to his presence afresh. Ere the night has passed into morning. And it's, I see, oh Lord, I want to see your face today. As soon as, as soon as there's a, that's the anointing, right? A little something. Convert that to prayer. Don't wait. Just convert the spirit to words. Yeah. You know what will happen when you do that? The words will be converted to light. And the Lord will speak to you. It's just mysterious. He'll speak to you through your speaking the word. Actually, this is the part of the musing Brother Bill talked about this morning. You have to voice the feeling. Give words to the anointing. If you don't give words to the anointing, you will never be able to interpret the anointing. 
You have to give words to the anointing. So as soon as a feeling comes, you convert it to prayer. And with the hymns, actually, it's too easy because the prayers are already there in the, in, in the hymn. So, it's, so uh, I think verse three, verse 3 of this hymn says, In tenderness he deals with me while I stay with joy in his presence. And he saturates and supplies my soul. Oh, Lord Jesus, Amen. saturate my soul. Amen. I know, Lord, my soul is my problem. My mind is my problem. My emotions, my problem. I love you right now, but when I leave this, built, this, this, this room, I love something else more. I confess, I'm sorry, Lord. I need more saturating. And then the Lord will stay. No, you don't need more saturating. You need more staying. Because it says, I, well, I, well, I, he saturates while I stay. While I stay with joy in his presence. He, said, he, he, he would say to me, leave the saturating to me. You take care of the staying. Stay in my presence. We say, but Lord, I, I don't know how to have your presence only in this room. Then he'll say, I'll go with you. Abide in me. These are conversations you have with the Lord before you even open. Just by singing. As, as the Lord touches and we respond to that little, that little anointing. Actually, we start a dialogue with the Lord. We get light. I already illustrated to you. We have fellowship. We have light. We have confession. We have the blood. And we have more fellowship. That's the cycle in First John 1. And, and, and you haven't even finished brushing your teeth. That could be while you're brushing your teeth. The fellowship begins... Because he called you into fellowship. Then you go and you sit there. And what I do is, if I don't know the hymn, then I, I, if I don't know all the words, I, I open. But if I know the hymn, I don't have to open. I just sing. All these years, all these years since I was, came to the recovery, 14 years old, oh, love the hymns. That's why many are already got in. Oh, if I had to memorize, memorize them now, I couldn't do it. But I did that when I was 13, 14, 14. I came to the Lord's recovery when I was 14. Actually, even many of the hymns, uh, not written by Brother Lee, that are in our hymn book, we sang them in the Brethren. I know these hymns since I was seven years old. So they're already in my heart. So the Lord can, maybe one sentence, one sentence, one phrase, the Lord can speak. 101, hymn 101. Hymn, what? 999. I know where it is. Learn the hymns. Learn the hymns. If not, you know what you do? You go to the hymn book. Oh, what, what? because the Lord touches you. Maybe the Lord touches you with, with, with this phrase. Uh, sorrow and love. Sorrow and love flowed, mingled down. Do you know the hymn, right? Yeah. Such a hymn? It says, sorrow and love. What is that? That's a description of the Lord on the cross when he was bleeding there. And it was, it was when the blood was coming down, the, the blood was a sign of sorrow because he was suffering. But it's also a sign of love. Oh, how beautiful, how poetic, how poetic. I think it should be 101, 101, right? When, when we survey the wondrous cross, this hymn, this hymn, just an illustration. Learn the hymns. Actually, our fellowship with the Lord will expand the more you know the hymns. And a fellowship with the Lord will also expand when you know the Bible. The more we learn and memorize the Word, then the Holy Spirit has more words to speak to you. 
Because the Holy Spirit speaks Bible. He speaks the scripture. And so, like in a different language, the Spirit is speaking, but we may not know what he's, if we, if we don't know the word, it's like he's speaking to us in Russian or, or Swahili. And we don't, a conference the other day, for the first time, Frank, it was translated to Swahili. I spoke in uh, Africa, not in Africa, for Africa. I was in my room. And it's translated to Swahili, first time. But if you don't know Swahili, you can understand. So the Lord's speaking to you. Maybe he's speaking to you, be still. <laughs> Stop. But you don't understand. I think after today, you would understand. Because there's, there's a feeling in you from what we fellowship. You know the verses now. The Holy Spirit can reach in and from the, tr from the storehouse that is deposited in you and bring up a message that you read last year. One of the training meetings that you've just passed through this week. Semi-annual training. This one that just passed. Or last year. At that time, it didn't mean much. But you received. You received. Very good. For the Holy Spirit to bring it to life. That's why we... It... it, it to attend the meetings, to attend the trainings, to attend the conference, to read the life studies, read the ministry books. Oh, it, it is valuable. Every contact with the word and with the spiritual literature, or to put yourself under a ministry, everyone, even you don't enjoy that meeting for some reason, but you're there. Something gets in, good enough. The Holy Spirit has more ammunition <laughs> to reach in and to think to you. Not only that, even the testimonies of the saints. Has that ever happened to you? The Lord, I'm praying and the Lord speaks. It was that testimony from that little sister two weeks ago. If I was not in that meeting, I would not understand this speaking. But I was there. The Spirit can speak. But the Spirit speaks. By, it's, it tells us in Kings, a gentle, quiet voice. You know that story? You know that story? Is it Elisha? Elijah. 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 With a J. Elijah. In the mountain. And there's what? There's an earthquake. But Jehovah was not in the earthquake. Then there's a fire. There's no, Jehovah was not in the fire. Then there's a strong wind. Jehovah was not in the strong wind. But then there was what? A gentle, quiet voice. Actually, in the King James Version of the, of the Bible, the gentle, quiet voice is recovery version. In the King James Version, what I grew up with, it says, a still, small voice. A still S-T-I-L-L. -L. A still, small voice. What's that? That's the anointing. The Lord speaks in us. What we need is to strengthen our spirit, particularly the function of the intuition, to interpret and understand that anointing. You know, our, our spirit has three functions, right? Conscience, the primary function, conscience. Fellowship, intuition. All three work together. As we're having fellowship with the Lord, light comes, we confess, conscience, fellowship, conscience, fellowship, conscience, intuition. When, when you have the sense the Lord spoke to me, that's intuition. That's light. How does it come? It actually comes from fellowship by the support of the conscience. You don't have to understand all this. You just pay attention. <laughs> but this is what's happening. That's why, saints, we must keep a pure conscience before God. 
We must keep a pure conscience before God so that our spirit will be strong and we can understand the speaking of the Lord in our spirit. Um, let me come to the question that was asked. Uh, our sister said something like this, that uh, how do you have this experience when you have the regular time with the Lord, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, even an hour? It's, from, from what I picked up, she said, you know, her experience of coming here, she had three hours and she had really good fellowship. When you have more time like that and, and less things around you, then, then it seems easier. How do you get that? How do you take that home, right? That's what you want to know. How do you have that experience? Okay. Um, <clears throat> give you a testimony. This was, um, Frank, I think you were with us when we had that college training with Brother Benjamin, if you recall that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was the summer, I mean, uh, the uh, January of 1987. You were in university, right, at that time, yeah. So we had, we had a training, we call it a tra training, but it was, three, it was a three week conference training in Jamaica Hall, Hall One in New York. The total registration was 18 students, 18. And then Brother Dennis Cooley, Brother Timothy Hung and myself, actually Timothy's still working, just Dennis and myself. On Monday night, we meet with them to talk about this, all the things we're talking here. And we, we, give, we give principles Monday night. Tuesday through Friday morning, we would meet at 8 or 8.30, something like this. And we wait for everyone to come, 8.30 to come. And as everyone came, and we sing one or two songs, you know, 15 minutes, just to pray and, you know, open our hearts together. And then this was the conference. Everyone go to a separate room in the meeting hall and practice this for one hour. That was our training. Then after the hour, we all came back together and then we all give a report. How was your time, Sister Judy? And you tell us testimony. How was your time? One by one by one by one, including Brother Dennis and me. We all give a testimony, all of us. That was our training. Oh, I tell you, I tell you, that little training, I don't know about you, Brother Frank, that changed my life. That changed my walk with the Lord. I told you before, when I read those books, it took me to another level in 2005 or six. Yeah, those were the things Brother Benjamin was sharing with us back in 1987. That, sorry, you all had them there. 87. You all had them there in Chinese. We didn't know. The only one who told us was Brother Benjamin. <laughs> but we tried to practice. Okay. Before the, this training, when uh, Brother Benjamin first uh, uh, told us this idea, yeah, I, I was with, we were in a coordination meeting. Of course, you were not there, right? We were in a coordination meeting with about 12 brothers and sisters talking about this coming. And he said, we need to send these college students to learn to fellowship with the Lord. I said, amen. I said, amen. Very good. And, and he says, and we should send them for one hour. Oh, in my heart, I said, didn't say amen. In my heart, I said, oh, Brother Benjamin, you don't know our young people. You don't know our young people. These young people cannot have fellowship with God for one hour. It's, uh, anyway, but I didn't say anything. I was sitting right next to him. I learned my lesson already. <laughs> yeah. Don't express your opinion. Very good, good thing. Because about 10 or 15 minutes later, he's sharing the burden, sharing the burden, and then he says, you know, I believe that some of you would think, when I say send the co college students for an hour, you will think, I don't know the young people. I was like, he says, they, they, their fellowship with the Lord is like a little child. Their attention 
after two minutes, you know, like a little child. And so, if you send them to fellowship with the Lord for 10 minutes, they will really fellowship with the Lord one or two minutes. Just like I illustrated this morning. The mind, the mind. If you send them for an hour, they will squeeze out 10 minutes. Do you understand the logic? Yeah. So, we sent them to practice. We sent them to practice. Oh, those, those, uh, the, the second session, that's where I learned so much. Because we said, okay, how was your time? Everybody had to report. So, in the meeting hall in Jamaica, you know, it's a big meeting hall. And, and, but it's not that big. It's not that big. And we have many rooms for children. But the, and the walls that we have are movable, you know. So they're, they're not soundproof. They're not soundproof. You can hear someone in the next room. Okay, so these are the testimonies. Because we didn't want to hear. We didn't want to hear, okay, brother, tell us, what did you enjoy this morning? Well, the Lord touched me that he's my, uh, uh, he's the bountiful supply of the Spirit. No, no, we don't want to hear this. We want to hear, how did you practice your time with the Lord? So we want to know. I knelt down, I stood up and walked, or I sat, and then I called on the Lord, I sang, I prayed, how, how, I prayed for five minutes, and then I didn't touch, felt like I didn't touch the Lord, so I had a feeling, sing a hymn, so I started to sing a hymn, and I didn't know what to sing, so I was looking for a good hymn, and I wasted seven minutes looking for a good hymn, and then I heard the brother in the other room call on the Lord, and he called too loud, and he got me upset, and I was thinking, I want to go tell him, be quiet, and, and then I realized, oh Lord Jesus, I shouldn't be that way, and, and, then, and then I started to call on the Lord, and I touched my spirit after 20 minutes. So after 20 minutes, then he called on the Lord, touched his spirit, and then he said, I began to sing a song. Uh, um, when we call, we get the person of that name. So I started to sing a hymn spontaneously. And then I remembered another song. Jesus, oh what a name. So I sang another hymn. Oh, very good. Because the spirit led him from one to the other to the other. We didn't talk about, not, we gave them verses. We gave them maybe two or three verses, and we gave them a suggested hymn. But those were not on calling on the Lord. The, the Spirit led him. That's what we wanted to know. Yeah. And, and so, one sister, I remember. Oh, I was, I was walking in the room. I was praying. Now remember, these, some of these are the children's rooms. I was walking and praying. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, and she said, oh in the corner. Spider web. <laughs> Oh, and then she looked around. Oh, oh, the whole room, spider webs. So she went to the supply room, and she got a stepladder, and she got the thing, and then she, she cleaned the room. She cleaned the room. Now, don't criticize this. This is good, because she's going to be in that room for three weeks. So she just removed a distraction. So spider webs will not distract her for those three weeks because that's not her place of prayer her place of prayer is at home but here distraction so she took it up and then she was very peaceful and then she enjoyed the lord okay another sister she gave this testimony she started to she also was walking uh, pacing like you know back and forth oh lord jesus oh oh, oh. and there's a map in the old testament showing where the 12 tribes were. Dan, up here. Benjamin, there. Naphtal, oh, she, I never knew. Oh, 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 oh. The chart with the children, with their pictures. Oh, <laughs> I know Esther. I know Sam. Oh, who's this? This must be Ivanhoe's uh, uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Then she remembered. Why? Because the other brothers calling on the Lord. In the, oh, oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. These practical experiences help us very much. The first thing is that you realize you're not the only one. 
This, this incredible, I was praise the Lord. I thought I was plagued. I thought, ever, I thought all of you enjoy the Lord and I don't enjoy the Lord in the morning. Because when the saints stand up, they say, praise the Lord for morning revival. I think, must be wonderful. But that's not my experience. And, every, and we only hear the positive experiences. Now we hear the real experiences. This helped me very much. It also helped me to see how the saints navigate and learn. Learn to use this, to use that. What, one thing I enjoyed and learned in that training is to be flexible. To be flexible. This just, this just means follow the anointing. Actually, this was Brother Benjamin's point. Follow the anointing. Don't have a structure so rigid you always follow. First I sit, then I call, then I pray, then I confess my sin, then I open the Bible or the Holy Word for Morning Revival, I pray read, then I thank the Lord, and then I go. Okay, it might be that way, but don't intend for it to be that way. Let the Lord lead you. That's all. Let the Lord lead you. Now, practice. And this is really now my answer. The only way to learn this is to practice. And you do need three hours once in a while. You do need one full hour to practice this more because we're not that skillful. And every time you learn something and you can apply it daily. Now, a kind of example. Um, uh, you know, uh, the story of David, King David, uh, when he was the boy, a boy, and Goliath, the, the giant. How did he slay Goliath? He had the sling shot. Yeah. And so, so uh, actually, actually, when, when he uh, went to the camp and he heard the Philistine, you know, uh, uh, to, to blaspheme Jehovah, he, he got stirred up and he said, who is this uncircumcised? Philistine and he started and then the you know they heard people heard that he talked like this and they reported to the King Saul King Saul there's a young boy here okay, bring him so they brought him they say how how do you think you can defeat Goliath he says well when I was taking care of the sheep a bear came and I you know the, the bear and a lion I think right bear, and I and I defeated them yeah and that, that was his resume. That's his resume, right? He was taking care of sheep. What's that? That's his job. He's a shepherd. He learned to trust the Lord in his daily life. You know, we think, we think that to defeat a lion and a bear, that's like, wow, that's a miracle. No, actually, that's part of the job description of a shepherd. That's not a big deal for a shepherd. For a shepherd, you have to learn how to get the animals away. That's why he was such a good marksman with the sling. And just to, you know, the sheep are over there and you're just practicing. Like, like I to the thing here and practice playing basketball. You know, practice my shot. That doesn't mean anything. The sling is to what? Perf his perfection. Okay, so how, uh, um, how did he think death? One shot, right? One shot. The king, Saul, wanted David to put on his armor, right? And he, I think he actually put it on. And, and you, know, what, you know, King Saul was a very tall man, right? So when he put, imagine a 17-year-old boy putting on the armor of this man, so tall and, you know. So, he comes with the armor, and he says, King, uh, King Saul, uh, I can't, I can't, I don't think I can use it. And when he went like this, the armor went, he <laughs> says, I, I, I can't use this, because I have not, he says, I have not tried it. 
That means, that means he has not experienced battle in this. So he can't apply this now. You cannot use apply other people's experiences in the battle with the Lord. You have to learn yourself. You have to learn yourself. So, David, he goes to the brook and he takes five smooth stones. If you send me to the brook, I would pick the wrong stones. Because I don't, I, that's not my, I don't know how to sling. I just think, use any rock. No, but he picked five smooth stones, it says. And then he didn't need five. He just used one. Okay, so then we have that thing and they're seeing each other. And then they start, he starts racing toward Goliath. And so, they, and then he comes with the armor bearer. And then David, I think David slung it maybe in motion even. Incredible. Or running, stop, throw, I don't know. Doesn't say. We can ask him in the kingdom. <laughs> yeah, if you're not there, New Jerusalem, he'll be there. So we, we, he, he throws it. Now, the, something, of course, you, you know the story, right? We all know the story. The stone hit Goliath where? Here. And it hit, not only it hit, you know, if I would throw a stone at Brother, I'm not going to throw a stone, Brother Bill. <laughs> but, it, but if I would throw a stone at Brother Bill, the stone would hit him and bounce off. But not that stone. What happened to that stone? It's, it hit and kept on going and sunk into his skull. Now, now, what kind of force do you need to, to, to make a stone go into a man's skull? Yeah, David didn't have that force. David didn't. That was God. But, but this is my point here. Listen, now, now listen to this. Listen to this. I believe David's aim, his aim, his marksmanship, his skill, got the stone exactly here. And God went. Do, do, do you understand? See, it, Brother Bill, you don't have to worry. If I would throw a stone at you, you're the only one that doesn't have to worry. Everybody else around you has to worry because I, I, would, I might hit him. <laughs> I might hit her. But you don't have to worry because I would miss you. Because I don't have that skill. How far were they? We don't know. But I believe his skill slung it. They, God had to use David because he was skillful in that. And his skill brought the stone here, and then God pushed it in. It's like when you play basketball. Like, and, you know, one person throws it, and the other one, ooh -ah! We call that an alley-oop. David did an alley-oop with God. I don't know how you translate that into Chinese. Yeah. What's my point? My point is that David needed this skill for God's economy. But where did he learn it in his daily life? Where did he perfect this skill in his daily life? The Lord's recovery is a recovery of life. Saints, we are walking on the way of truth and life. You know, these recent conferences that we have had, beginning with the first feast in uh, February, the Chinese speaking conference, very much on the matter of life. Do you remember these two key words? Intrinsic and organic. And then Memorial Day, the Memorial Day conference was on truth, right? Knowing the truth, being absolute, for the truth and proclaiming the truth in the present evil age. The Lord's recovery is on the way of life. 
one day we all will meet the Lord. We all will meet the Lord. Whether we go to him or he comes to us, we will meet him. I want to go, I want to go, well, I want to be here so that me. I don't want to go to him too fast. But either way, I will face him. We all will face him at the judgment seat. And I don't want the experience of Matthew 7. You know Matthew 7? They come and they say, Lord, Lord, open, open to us. He says, I never knew you. Oh, if my Lord would say that to me, after doing all this, running here, running there, this country, that country, this conference, that conference, no message means anything. No glory means, oh, good message, brother. Means nothing. If I don't have well done. That's what I want to hear. How about you? Yes. Well done. Good and faithful servant. You have been faithful for little things. Little things. But to some, the Lord will say, I, I never knew you. I didn't know you. He says, but Lord, did we, didn't we do this in your name, that in your name, in your name, or even cast out demons, we prophesied? And, and he said, he, he didn't say no. He may have said, maybe you did. But I never knew. I never proved. Why? Because all those times, I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't tell you to do this. I didn't send you the wind. But you blessed. Of course I blessed. I'm merciful. But I didn't send you. I blessed for them, not for you. I blessed for my purpose, not to glorify you. I blessed to build my church, not to give you a name. Sometimes we mix up because some work is successful. We think, oh, we have the Lord's presence and blessing. No! Even the Lord's blessing, we might read it the wrong way. How can you know when he says, I never knew you? I never approved of you. Where does that happen? That's what I'm talking about. In the morning, when I'm with the Lord. Lord, Lord, I love you. Lord, I need you. And he puts a song in our heart. He puts a verse in our heart. He, he speaks to us. He exposes us. And we follow the anointing to confess or to sing a hymn or just to be silent or just to weep. Just weep. Sometimes all you can do is weep. Don't say anything. Anything you say, you have to repent. Anything you say is wrong at that time. You just, Lord, and you just feel... How merciful, how merciful, Lord, how merciful that you would deal with me in tenderness, like the song says, in tenderness he deals with me. Oh, anyone else, I would have, I would have been fired a long time ago. Why does the Lord have mercy to allow me to serve him? I don't know. I'd rather not. I'd rather not. You know, we have a hymn that says, uh, I think it's, uh, is, what is it, 589? It says, Oh, to be, but emptier, emptier, more empty, lowlier, lowlier, mean, unnoticed, and unknown. <laughs> That's a, oh, to be but emptier, lowlier, mean, unnoticed, and unknown. But to God a vessel holier, <laughs> to God, to God, we do things to him. So we have to function the way he calls us to function. But actually, we'd rather be unnoticed and unknown. 
the Lord in those intimate times. He wants to form an inner, like a surgery, <laughs> to remove all the obstacles that are in our heart. But we just need to allow him. And this is a great part of that. This is a great part of that. Um, a little something about prayer reading. Because actually our prayer reading, which is included in the musing that we, was mentioned this morning, <clears throat> the Lord can accomplish a lot through our prayer reading. If um, we practice this kind of what I call flexibility, which is just following the anointing. Okay, just an example. Um, a verse I think that we all know, John 1.1. 1, 1. I think we all know John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There are many different kinds of pray reading. When we're pray, pray reading corporately, that's one pray reading. It's so strengthening. It's, it's, it's uh, in, in a sanctified way, in a sanctified way, it's even fun. <laughs> it's an enjoyment. I could tell you, though, sometimes the corporate pray reading in the past turned into soulish amusement. Yeah. I've been in meetings like that where, where because we're pray reading together and, and someone, you know how, how, how we, we pray a word like, in the beginning, amen, in the beginning, amen, and we all, in the beginning, and we all repeat what one, and then, and then, uh, uh, this was ago, in the 1970s, I remember, we had some brothers who were very, uh, they could, they could think very quickly, I don't know, they, they just had particular mind, and they say something funny, that it fits, but it's a little humorous, oh, and, but it takes everybody away from the spirit. So it became like a game. The brother said, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. So, so they encourage us. When we're together, try not to introduce too many other words. So it's safer when we just repeat read. The beginning was the word. Amen. Word. Amen. The word. Amen. The word. The word. Not anybody's word. Word was with God. Amen. With God. And so, it stirs up our spirit. Okay. If you pray like this personally, it is good. It is good. And actually, many of our saints, they only pray read this way. Why? Because this is all they know. This is the example from the meeting. And if we don't teach them, you can pray other ways. Then they will just pray like this. Now, is this good? Absolutely. Will this stir up your spirit? Definitely. Well, I shouldn't say definitely every day, but it could stir up your spirit. Yeah. But you know what? If you only pray this way, you limit the Lord speaking to you. You limit the Lord speaking to you. Ephesians 6. In Ephesians 6, it says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which spirit is the word of God, by means of, what? All prayer. Praying at every time in spirit. So, what does it mean, by means of all prayer? It means all kinds of prayer. All kinds. Short prayers, long prayers, loud prayers, quiet prayers. So, if you only eat, read, in the beginning was the Word. Amen. The Word was with God. Amen. The Word was God. Amen. That took about what? 12 seconds. Did I touch the Spirit? Maybe. You said amen. Don't go by that. I don't know what, uh, what, is what transactions are happening when the saints pray read personally. I remember one time we were trying to train the young people to, to uh, have time with the Lord, and in the, 
in the big meeting hall in Jamaica. You know, we have like 400 seats there and it was full. And then we told everyone, turn around and kneel on your chair. So you could, you know, and pray read for, I th we told it, we had this program, right? Seven minutes with the Lord. And we guide them through stuff. And we have, I think it's two and a half minutes for pray reading, something like that, or three minutes, I forget. And I, I remember one time I was in the front guiding them for, okay, first 30 seconds, call on the Lord. Okay, now for one minute, pray. Okay, now pray read for two, pray read. Oh, well, we didn't tell them pray read for a minute. Uh, we just told them, go. And then we tell them, okay, now pray read. Okay, now have some time to confess your sin. Okay, it's time to pray read. We have it on the schedule, two and a half minutes. After like 15 seconds, one little boy. <laughs> and it's, you know, 15 seconds. He finished. And it's two and a half minutes. Do you know how, what two and a half minutes is to a 12-year-old boy? Oh, it's like eternity. <laughs> yeah, and so he's... Okay, so tell one of the brothers, maybe, maybe... Go, go talk to the boy. Maybe he didn't, get, he didn't write down the verse. It was too fast. So the brother went and said, actually, two verses. He said, no, no, I got the verse. Uh, did you pray? <laughs> you pray both verses? <laughs> he said, yeah. So I know how he pray read. He goes, amen. In the beginning was the word. Amen. The word was with God. Amen. The word was God. It is the spirit who gives life. Amen. <laughs> Can you say he didn't pray read? No, he pray read, but in his way. That's all he knew. He's only 12, 13. It's okay. But not okay for you. No speaking of the Lord. No real fellowship. At most, you know what this is? This is, this is like, like the, the, to plug in your phone, to you know, recharge your phone. You get a little, little juice until the next time. And it might not last you until the end of work. Not real fellowship. So we encourage, in, in, in just a brief way, to personalize the words of the Bible. So, so take every phrase and make it our prayer. And we say, I, me, you, your. So a verse like this, in the beginning was the word. So you might pray, oh Lord, in the beginning was the word, amen. Lord, Lord, thank you, you are in the beginning. In the beginning was, were you, Lord? You're in the beginning. Lord, Lord, today I take you as my beginning. Oh Lord, be my beginning. And, and the more words you say, words come. You don't have to make anything up, words come. You might say, Lord, 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 be the beginning of everything in my daily life, in my service. Oh, Lord, be the beginning of every conversation. Oh, Lord, be the beginning of every labor. Oh, Lord, you're my beginning. And the Lord might say, am I? Ooh. How about yesterday at the dinner table with your wife? Was I the beginning? Oh, this thought comes very specific. Lord, no. Forgive me. You were not the beginning. I was the beginning. Forgive me for taking your place. Lord, thank you for the blood. Cleanse me and, and be my king, be my Lord, be my head, and be my husband. Now, this verse doesn't say king, Lord, head, husband. I'm saying that because that was in the training. And it's in my mind now. But it, came, but it came. Why did that come now? I did not plan at 3 p.m. that I would say this in this meeting. As I was right now, it just came. So I said it. Okay, don't, don't analyze. Just follow the little feeling. Then from there, oh, I tell you, you might pray, Lord, I want you to be my beginning. I want you to be my alpha and my omega. I want you to be the beginning and the end. You know, John 1 doesn't have such a verse. That verse is in the book of Revelation. It says he's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. 
How come I prayed that? Because I read it before. And because I read it before, it's stored in my spirit, in my heart. So the Holy Spirit can bring it up. Say, oh, Lord, be my beginning, my end. Be my alpha and my omega and everything in between. You know, people pray like this. And then the Lord might say, hmm, last night, was I your end? Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. And you might think about, what was I thinking about at the end of the day? What was the last thing I did or searched right before I went to bed? Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, forgive me. You were my beginning yesterday. You were even my alpha, my beta, my gamma, but you were not my omega. Lord, forgive me. Why do I always look at that? Why do I always depend on, on that? And actually, this might be a problem you have for five years. You have a good beginning, but you don't have a good end of the day. But, but you never realized, you never stopped, so the Lord could operate. This kind of fellowship, the Lord can quiet you and operate on you. So anyway, I hope this fellowship gives you some guideline, some principle. This is what Brother Lee is trying to bring out. Don't practice anything so rigidly, but there are principles that if you apply them, doesn't have to be A, B, C. It could be A, C, D, B, F. But if you apply them, probably you'll have good fellowship with the Lord. And it's a learning process. It's a learning process. We're still learning. We're still learning. More than 50 years of learning. But we're still learning. But sometimes it's true. You need longer time. So make longer time. Come up here. Take longer time. Have your own, uh, your own practice of fellowship mini retreat. Come and spend three hours here. I, we, I've done this. I've done this. I know Brother Shen Quen has done this. To come here and just, just to be with the Lord, to walk and be with the Lord. And then we gain things that we can practice in our daily life. So that when the Lord needs something for his economy, in one shot, we can get it. Because saints, there will be. There are things like this. When, when, when the brothers, when, when, when we make a call for migration, should you go? Should you go? Migrate for the Lord's purpose somewhere? Who, no one should be, no one can tell you. But maybe the Lord wants you to move. Actually, if you practice that, knowing the anointing like that, the Lord will be able to speak to you. Go to this school. Go to that city. Even for the single ones, don't marry this person. This is not the one for you. I have one for you. How do you know? Oh, she's beautiful. She's uh, good education, good this, good that. Oh, the gentle, quiet voice. That is what, that is what we're guided by. Many things in our life, the Lord will guide us. But we practice every day. For David, I believe, you know, David says, what? Uh, when I see the stars, when I see the moon, that means he was out in the open at night taking care of those sheep. Do you think he was thinking, oh, one day this is going to prepare me to defeat Goliath and become the king? No, he doesn't think that. He was just faithful in his daily life. So we should be faithful. Every day, spend time with the Lord. If it's 10 minutes, 10 minutes. But we want 10 quality minutes. If it's 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Quality minutes. That's what we want. That we would always improve. That's why I leave you with the hymn that we began with. Savior, lead me up the mountain. Give me fellowship with you. We should just ask the Lord. Lord, answer this prayer. Lead me deeper in my fellowship with you. Amen.